Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Environment Canada meteorologist David Jones with another weekend update on the Arctic outbreak. By the way, I hope you uh, like the flashing lights. It's Christmas soon. My daughter insisted. Let's take a closer look. Here's the future clouds forecast for 1600 hours or 4 p.m. today. The Arctic vortex or upper atmospheric low pressure system is near Haida Gwaii. As we roll into the future, you can see this vast area of cold air sweeping the clouds southward with the low. By Tuesday morning, the low is somewhere south of Saskatchewan, and frigid Arctic air engulfs all of western Canada. Here's the forecast map for 4 p.m. today. A broad area of low pressure at the surface is sliding south, pulling the Arctic air along with it. At 4 p.m., the front is moving through Prince George roughly, and a reverse temperature trend is occurring. That simply means the temperatures are falling rather than rising during the day. As we roll toward Monday afternoon at 4 p.m., the surface low and the Arctic front plunge south. Snow and blowing snow along the front will create treacherous driving conditions on the highways as the temperature falls. In the transition to Arctic air, rain or mixed rain and snow will eventually turn to snow. With falling snow levels around Metro Vancouver, Burnaby Mountain may see a significant snowfall Monday prior to the arrival of the Arctic front. Fernie could also get hit hard with snow, heads up, possibly 30 centimeters. Monday night is going to be cold, bitterly cold, as the Squamish or outflow wind pattern sets up. Gale force northeast winds will cause significant wind chills. Overnight Monday, Victoria and the east coast of Vancouver Island will become vulnerable to the lake effect snowfall pattern I highlighted in yesterday's video. Snow streamers develop as the Arctic air flowing over the warm waters of the strait absorbs moisture and unloads it in wicked microscale blizzards along the east coast of the island. Forecasters can never pinpoint exactly where the streamers develop. Be prepared. There are at least three key questions regarding snowfall accumulations. Number one, when will the colder air turn the rain to snow? Number two, how much moisture will be left to produce snow after that time? And number three, when will the snow density change from heavy wet and melting on contact with warm ground to dry fluffy flakes that don't melt on contact because the ground is now frozen? Wet snow falling on warm ground melts, but every flake of dry snow falling on a frozen surface piles up. So even if there is only minimal moisture left over after the temperature falls, dry snow along the Arctic front can deepen rapidly. It's no easy task forecasting snowfall. Watch as the pressure gradient along the coast weakens from Tuesday through Thursday, killing the outflow and any snow streamers that may have developed. Clouds will dissipate into brilliant sunshine that will stick around through at least midweek. Now, it's not time to alarm anyone, and we especially don't want the media to jump all over this, but at least one of our models is suggesting a system will approach from the northwest later in the week. Watch as it rolls down the coast through Friday afternoon, spreading precipitation along the way. If this solitary model is correct, we'll be set up for a classic south coast snowstorm of the Type 2 variety. Environment Canada meteorologist Trevor Smith, who was the lead forecaster for the 2010 Winter Olympic Games, is the guru of lowland snowfall forecasting on the coast. Trevor has done lots of studies, and if you want to see me parrot and simplify his fine work on these events, check out this video. Here's the timeline. Today, the Arctic front blasts through the central interior. Tomorrow, the Arctic air reaches the southern interior in the morning and the south coast late in the day. Tuesday through Wednesday, sunny, cold weather prevails. And let's stay tuned for what happens later in the week. We could have a snowstorm of the Type 2 variety. Here's an update on the forecast snowfall accumulations for the higher elevations of Haida Gwaii, anywhere up to 5 centimeters. On the north coast and the central coast, we've toned it down to about 5 centimeters, moving inland to the Bulkley Valley, Prince George, the Caribou, and points north, up to about 5 centimeters. Warnings are still in effect for the Peace, the Williston, and the McGregor areas, including perhaps the Yellowhead, anywhere from 15 to 25 centimeters there. I mentioned Fernie, the Columbia and Kootenays, 15 to 30, still on tap for those regions. 
Across the Okanagan, the Thompson, the Shoe Swap, we're talking about 2 to 10 centimeters, but in the mountain passes throughout the southern interior, there may be as much as 35 centimeters. Special warning statements are in effect for the highway passes. On the mainland, from, say, Hope through the canyon up towards Whistler, 5 to 15 centimeters is likely. On the coast itself, including Metro Vancouver, the Sunshine Coast, and Vancouver Island, we're suggesting anywhere from nothing to a few centimeters of snow along the Arctic front. And if you'd like to follow the severe weather watcher reports that are sent into Environment Canada by our volunteers, you can check them out on this website. Bulletins and reports are automatically uploaded there. If you'd like to become a severe weather watcher, please contact me. By the way, the links from today's video are listed on the YouTube site. That's it for today's Heads Up. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and drive safe. Thank you.